we will now start looking at how we can reduce the number of states such that we have as few states as possible in our state transition graph. So a definition that we want to have here is that of equivalent graphs. So two graphs are said to be equivalent if they describe the same behavior. So let us consider the following two graphs as an example. So we have S1 and S2 in the first graph. And we have seen this as the parity check example before where we have the edge with input zero, output zero from S1 back to S1. We have one one from S1 to S2. And if we're on S2 with input zero, we have a one as an output. And if we are in S2 with an input one, we get a zero as an output. So this is one graph that describes the parity check problem. Let us now look at another graph in which we have three different states and we call them S1, S2 and S3. So this graph looks in the following way. So from S1 we will have with input 0 we will have output 0 and we go to S3. When we have input 1 we go to S2 with an output 1. In S2 with input 0 we stay in the state S2 with a 1 in the output and then with a 1 as an input we go to state S3 with a 0 as an output and in state S3 with a 0 as an input we go to state S1 and we output a 0 and finally with a 1 as an output we go back to state S2 with a 1 as an output. Now as an example let's say that we have the input here in our first graph as 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and then some other inputs. What will the output be here if you look at this graph? Well, assume that we start in S1, so we have this as our starting state. Then our output will be first a 1 and we go to S2 then it will be again a 1 and we stay in S2 and again a 1 and we stay in S2 and then we have the output 0 and we go to S1 and then we have the output 1 and we go back to S2 and here we have the output 1 and we stay in S2. Now let us look at the same input sequence for the second graph. So we have the input sequence 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. Now assume that we start in the state S1 the output sequence here would be that we get first a 1 as an output and we go to state S2. Then we stay in state S2 with a 1 as an output and we do this two times for both our 0 inputs. Then we have a 1 as an input. It will output a 0 and we go to state S3. Then with a 1 as an input we go back to state S2 with a 1 as an output and the zero here will let us stay in state S2 with a 1 as an output. Now instead assume that we start in the state S3, what would be the output then? Well if we start in S3 and we get a 1 as an input we will output a 1 and then we will input two zeros so we will stay in state S2 for both these zeros and then we have a zero as a one as an input and then we will go to state S3 with a zero as an output and then we have a one as an input and again we go back to state S2 with a one as an output and for the last zero input we will stay in state S2 with a one as an output. So if we compare these two behaviors, it seems that these two graphs might be doing the same thing because for the same input that we have here, we also get the same output. And also, regardless if we start in S1 or S3, we will get the same output sequence. This is not a formal proof, of course, that these two graphs are equivalent, but it seems to be the case. So we can say that if the graphs are equivalent, then it is impossible to distinguish them by manipulating the input sequences and observing the output sequences. And this seemed to be the case for this example that we have here. 
Now let us formalize this a bit by defining an equivalence relation. An equivalence relation is a binary relation written with this symbol here over a set S such that it is reflexive, so S is equivalent with S. It is symmetric, so if S1 is equivalent with S2, then S2 is also equivalent with S1. And it is transitive, which means that if S1 is equivalent with S2, and S2 is equivalent with S3, then S1 is equivalent with S3. And this should hold for all our elements in the set S, that we call S, S1, S2 and S3 in these uh, relations. And an equivalence relation over a set S partitions this set S into disjoint subsets. And these disjoint subsets are called equivalence classes. Here is an example of an equivalence relation. So consider the set of all integers Z and let the equivalence relation mean here congruent modulo 5. This means that we say that A is equivalent to B or congruent to B if the remainder when we divide A by M is the same as the remainder when we divide B by M. Then equivalence here is a, an equivalence relation over Z. And in this case, there are five equivalence classes. There is the class where we get zero when we divide by five, where we get one when we divide by five, when we get two when we divide by five, where we get three when we divide by five, and finally, where we get four when we divide by five. And each of these classes contain an infinite number of elements. And if we represent the classes with its least positive integer, then we are back to modular calculation again. So we now have the following definition for state equivalence. We say that two states, S1 and S2, are equivalent, and we write this as S1 is equivalent to S2, if for all input sequences, the corresponding output sequences are identical, regardless if we start in the state S1 or S2. The state equivalence is an equivalence relation and the equivalence classes correspond to non-equivalent states. And this leads us to the definition of a reduced form state machine. So if there are no equivalent states in a finite state machine, then we say that the machine is on reduced form.